TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it? Little warning screen. Uh, just in case, don't forget we are... We do have a Patreon. We post Monday through Sunday now. Including Premier League highlights. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. Information for all this stuff is on the um, description below, man. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 26. What's in the title? You see it, man. Let's get to it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Threats. Recent research shows that the number of UK motorists being given parking fines by private companies has increased by over 25% in the last year alone. A leading motoring organisation estimates that around 4.5 million tickets were issued by private parking firms last year. It's 6.15 a.m. High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are in West London to recover a debt of almost £1,800. I remember when we first started watching this, y'all was like, man, they can never do that in London. Well, they've been in London this whole season and part of last. Now what y'all gonna say? ...owed by Neelam Zagune in unpaid... Granted, this is West London. It's kind of rich over there, but... It gets spooky too, from what I've been told. Parking fines. Is that a big old rugby ground, isn't it? It's reckon, yeah. Bigger than Wembley. It's massive. The agents have been given details of the car in which the parking offences were committed. And I know she owns the Black Fiesta. If it's in the car park, it will give us an idea if she's in. Right, look out for Black Fiesta ending RSX. But on arrival at the address, there's no sign of the car. Just park up anywhere then. It appears Neelam may have left home already. But Gary and Connor make their way up to the third floor flat to double check. Hello Neelam, can you open the door please? Hi, Neelam? Hi there. My name's Gary Brown. I'm uh, an enforcement agent. This is my colleague, Connor Jackson. Hello. You've been taken to court. I think you've been parking your car somewhere where you shouldn't do. So uh, we're here to collect £1,793.77. Are you okay. able to pay that? No. No, OK. This has gone to court. I've told them that, yes, I am. You look kind of good. I ain't going to hold you. I'm the owner of the vehicle. However, um, I'm not the driver. Because it's in the, the car's registered in your name, wherever they they ticket the vehicle, they're going to come to you, to you if the ticket's unpaid. So the situation is now that we're here to remove goods from the property unless the debt is paid. Okay. So is there somebody you can call that yes, can sir. potentially help? Yes. Neelam goes inside to call for help. Who is it you're ringing? Is it a family member? It's my um, ex-partner. He's the one who the vehicle. OK. Do you know if he's got the funds to pay it? I have no idea. Okay. He, he, ain't, he ain't giving that money up. Hello? Shalom, get up. Hello? 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 What do you mean the parking tickets aren't even that much? It's gone higher and higher and higher because they're taking it to court. What am I supposed to do? So what am I supposed to do? 
were. What do you mean, why would I open the door to them? I, you think they're going to go away? Do you want me to speak to him? He's like, give me, give the phone to them. I'll speak to him. They don't exist. Here you go. Hello? Well, how can I help you, mate? Um, we're here to collect a debt that's owed. Apparently you're the one that's incurred the, um, the fines. Yeah, but she ain't with neither did she have the money, neither do I, mate. Okay, then there's no point continuing this conversation, is there? Give the phone to her, mate. Right. Have you got the money? Yes or no? Because if you haven't, then why the fuck... I can see why he's an ex. I'm wasting my time on the phone to you. Gary and Connor are now in a sensitive situation. Neelam's ex-partner may have been responsible for the fine. You can see why he's an ex and he's not a good person, probably, man. Well, he's probably a good person, but he's not a real one. Real one gonna make it way. But the writ is in her name, and she is liable for the £1,800 owed. Neelam, we will try and make this as easy as possible. I know it's not a nice situation to be in. He's the one that's incurred the tickets on the car. Tail end of relationships is, is quite a dangerous place for people when it comes to getting into debt. Um, because there's a lot of other things that are going around in people's heads. It's quite an awkward situation to be in. Um, you're sort of thrust into the middle of an argument um, with no side to take, stood there as a third wheel. It's a very surreal feeling and sometimes you just have to ride it out a little bit and uh, wait for the situation to calm down. 30 minutes later, Neelam's ex-boyfriend, Shazad, arrives. There's the car, though. Take the whip. Mm -mm. Is he driving your car at the moment? He's just turned up. <laughs> he kicked the car. I think he's damaged our van. It's clear Shazad is in a hostile mood. Neelam. Is he slashing the tires? Gets him on the phone. You've got cash. I'll buzz you in Bishop, but please, Shabad, I beg you, don't cause no commotion. With the promise that he's going to pay up, Neelam lets her ex in. You done something to our van? That don't look like he'll bust a great. That looks soft. Right, the situation is... I can give you 500 pounds, mate. That's all I've got right now. Oh, five, 500 pounds isn't enough, and we can't accept an arrangement for a debt of, the, of this size. If we... So what, you think I'm going to walk around with 17 and a pound? No, but they've got card Debit card? Huh? Have you got they've a debit got, card? No, I don't have no thin card. Credit card? Right. It needs to be 1,793 pounds, 77 pence, or we remove goods. Well, no, I'm going to give you 500 pounds cash right now, and you can no. wait, and I'm going to grab the rest no. of the money. No, it's going to... Bruh, are you going to talk to me? Don't ignore me, bruv. Don't walk around. Don't ignore me. Bessie door, she's like, Bessie door, give me the £500, please, man. Okay. Okay. We're not going to be leaving. Shut up, no one's asking you for anything. Uh, Shut up. No okay, one's sorry, asking you for anything, sorry, is it? Sorry, sorry, fucking now. Fucking bunch of fucking freaks, bro. Yeah, they My favourite thing is to debunk people thinking that they tough. I mean, you can talk all you want, but just... Give me the opportunity to debunk the theory and it's going to happen. As long as I can put self-defense. Stop my clock. Guess okay, what? Shazad. Why they fucking tickling my okay, left hand right Okay, This simple enforcement. Now he turned communal. Enforcement has suddenly escalated. Faced with more abuse, Gary and Connor will have to use all their experience to get this case resolved. How does they excellent still got the whip? Responsibility and Connor. Now the agents need to try and calm Shazard down and make it clear that his five hundred pound offer is not enough. I ain't worried about buddy. He ain't on nothing. General rule of thumb: anybody try pulls up and they trying to do damage to your like property, they normally not really like that. They normally all talk. You haven't got any other cash, any other money you can give us, have you? No, that's what I said to you. With no better offer on the table, Gary and Connor start an inventory of goods they could seize to clear the balance. Um, what we have to do is take pictures. Inventory, I know. Yeah. I know. But then suddenly, Shazad gives Neelam some cash. That's 600 pounds. And makes for the door. Shazad, well, are you going to fucking take off in the door? Well, maybe. Maybe. See you later.
Ignore him, please. He's just very, very stupid. Neil, don't, don't worry about it. We, we, we deal with a lot worse than that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Has he gone home to get the rest, has he? Let's see what sort of time he gets back. All right. I, I, I'll inform him to hurry up. Twenty minutes later. He's here, mate. Shazad returns. Block them in. He's parked deliberately behind our van. He's just trying to get one over on us. It's clear that he hasn't calmed down. You know how the it is? Okay, and, what, and they hire you big lads though, so you can scare people. No. Trust me, because one bit you don't scare anyone, bud. Shazad has brought some more cash, but he's unwilling to hand it straight over. Well, I'm going to have to count it anyway, so if you want to watch me count it. No, I don't want to watch you count. You're going to watch me count it. You carry on doing what you're doing, I'll have to count it after you. Waste time. I'll tell you what. Well, I'm going to count it right next to you. Stop wasting right my time. Let me count the money, Let's right? And then you can watch me count it. Thank you. 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Shazad has now cleared the entire debt in cash. Who's, who's name I'm putting the receipt in? in? Yeah, we know Shazad got. <clears throat> he trapping. Yours. Still ain't gonna stop me from parking it. Shazad, you're not gonna pass that much. All right, hopefully we won't have to come back. All right, take care. The case is finally resolved. How are you gonna get out the parking spot? Now all Gary and Connor have to do is work out how they're going to get their van out. But Shazad has quickly followed them downstairs. Well, look, look what you're doing. Look what you're doing. You're not fucking trying to mark me up because you're taking 17 on the car and be like, I'm going to take a joke, man. I'm going to stand there and you can do that. All right, cool, mate. How about I call the police? What are they going to do? They'll move out of the way. Well, that's going to waste their time and that. They can do that. All the shit. While Connor tries to maneuver the van around the Fiesta, Gary calls the police. Hi there, my name's Gary Brown. I'm an enforcement agent uh, with a high court writ. We've got the writ paid. You've already lost the battle. You just move your car. But there's a guy out here called Rashad who just wants to cause problems by blocking the car in. What's his game? As Connor backs up, Gary spots something. He's um, punctured our tyre. Wow, he slashed the tyre. He's going to jail. That's criminal destruction. So I let the police on their way. For what? Criminal damage. For what? My tyre. And then Shazard suddenly decides to leave. I've got his picture. He's walking off. You'll get a visit from the police, all right, mate? See you soon. Sometimes the things that we do can cause people to lose a lot of face and they sometimes do very silly things and that is just going to cause them more problems but they don't realize that at the time 10 minutes later the police arrive so how much damage has been done to your van it's a punctured tire is this something that that he would be arrested for yeah. is it and it yeah, is damage, yeah. oh, if he's not he'll be on our system i'm sure he'll regret it when uh, when you do catch up with him Cool. You'll be going around slashing your tyres every time That's it. disagrees with your job. That's it. Alrighty. Alright, cool. No problem at all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. All Gary and Connor can do now is wait for a mechanic to arrive and repair the van. We've got to get the tyre changed, but who's going to have the last laugh? Because we're going to be on our way soon, and he's uh, £1,793 down, and he's probably going to get arrested for it as well. Research has shown that over one and a half million low-income households in the UK are struggling with extreme... Sorry, I had an early dinner today, man. I couldn't even hold back. I had a flatbread pizza, one of them healthy ones. I'm not lying. It's, it's truly a healthy pizza. I don't know where it was from. My brother bought it. You know, you get a frozen pizza, it's like 1,100 calories. This one's only like 500, 600. I'll take it. Mm. Green levels of debt. Low carb. Too. Average household debt, including mortgages, is now over £56,000 and is predicted to increase by over 50% in the next five years. Total household debt in the UK is forecast to reach 
High Court enforcement agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Yardley, Birmingham, to collect a large debt of nearly £40,000 from Mrs Linda Bird. Grey, horrible day. Miserable, isn't it? The money is owed to a firm of solicitors for unpaid legal fees arising from a family dispute which began ten years ago. A lot of money. £38,209.40. That's a massive one, isn't it? The claimant has tried several times over the last decade to get their money back. And so finally, they escalated the case to the High Court in a last chance bid to reclaim the money they're owed. Yeah, go on. With such a large amount to recover, the agents aren't expecting the full amount today. But if Mrs. Bird doesn't make an acceptable offer, Matt and Gary will have to remove goods to offset at least part of the debt. Hello, sir, how are you? I'm looking for uh, Linda Bird. Right, she's not here. She's not here? No, she's OK, can you give her a call for me? Who are you, mate? What, my what do you want? Uh, that's not a problem, I can explain the way. My name's Mr Highway, so I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Right, OK. Hold on, bag. can I call you back in two minutes? What, what's, it, uh, what's it regarding, anyway? I'm here with a writ from the High Court, sir. So oh, that's okay. it. that is all I can tell you at the moment, unfortunately. For what, I will need to speak to Linda about it, as you can imagine. Is, is Linda your mother or partner? Yeah, my mum. Mum, OK. The debtor's son, Wayne, gets his mother on the phone. you got High Court enforcement agents here at the fucking front door. All right, tell me. Should be back in a bit, mate. With the door open, Matt takes the opportunity to make peaceful entry into the house. Hold on, hold on. Don't, no, don't come into my house, right? Yeah. You, now you're forcing entry. Well, you better get the police okay. here, mate. I don't need police, sir. Well, I do. Hi, uh, yeah, can I have the police, please? Right, I've had some county court bailiffs turn up at the property. They're not for me, and yet they're forcing through the door, and he's actually making me feel threatened in my own property. The police tell Wayne the agents have every right to be in the house. Well, you've, you've been about as outful as a fucking turd, so thank you. Fuck. <laughs> thank just, you. Just come in here. We can make entry through uh, any open door. That's where people often get um, confused as to what they can and can't do, whether they are able to obstruct us. Um, no, you know, once we've entered, um, we're, we're there legally and lawfully. Fifteen minutes later, Mrs. Bird arrives back home. Hiya. Hiya, Linda. You all right? Yes, thank you. Sorry for the disruption. No, it's okay. My, my name's Matthew Hyman. I'm a High Court Enforcement okay. Agent. I'm here with a... Can you show me what floor, please? Yeah. Right. Do you want to take a seat and we'll yeah, have, a, have a chat through it, yeah. So, uh, the, the, the claimant took you to the county court, so they've escalated that to the High Court for enforcement yeah, purposes. Yes, so I'm taking me to my court. The, the writ from the High Court uh, commands myself and my colleague to attend here today to ask you for payment um, or to seize goods to the value of... I'm or, going to receive my goods. It's a huge amount of money. Are you aware of that? Yeah, it was 25 at the time. It's £38,000 now. Well, I don't know about that because I thought it was yeah. possible because I haven't heard from... Definitely don't got $38,000 with that wallpaper on the wall. I know it. Now, they do got a little digital fireplace. For 10 years, so that is a bit unfair to me that he's done that to me. It's clear that the size of the debt, now with 10 years' worth of interest added, has come as a shock to Mrs. Bird. Matt needs her to understand what she must do next. We are going to have to do something about this this, this outstanding debt. What can you raise at the moment? That's a copy of the warrant for you from the from the High Court. Right. They're going to want a substantial down payment. It's a £38,000. I'm going to get money if I haven't got. Can I phone him up to make a raise? But I need to give you £200 a week. Give him a call. Give him a call. Linda calls the claimant's office to try and come to an informal agreement. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Burr. Hello. I'm in to pay £200 a week and I've been down the office in the morning. I don't mind that. And I didn't know I owed that much. I've got the enforcement blokes here. Do you want to speak to them? Yes, please, yeah. Hello? Hello, madam. It's Gary Ball, the High Court Enforcement Agent. Oh, right, OK. Just... Hold on there, I'll see what I can do All with right, her. All right, thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. 
The office promises to call back, but her son Wayne is not happy with the offer his mother has put forward. Talk sense to him because if you start saying you're going to pay something you can't afford and then you relapse on it, it'll be back again. Yeah, large debts are always difficult to collect. Right. Um, you know, when, when we see forty and fifty thousand pound on on a writ, our eyes roll. I ain't even gonna lie, they had to throw this case out. Mm -mm. All in the back of this mug could be ongoing. Bad, because you know, unless someone's very well off, most most times people will struggle with that sort of debt. Ten minutes later, the claimant's office calls back. Hello. Hello, Gary. Carry on doing what you're doing, please. Okay, carry, carry on. Before. All right. Okay, that's... Yeah, rejected. Carry on what you're doing. The agents now have no choice but to start an inventory of goods they could seize to offset some of the £38,000 Linda owes. Lenovo laptop. Xbox, right? Yeah, one. But Wayne has other ideas. Well, you ain't touching that telly or that Xbox. So as far as they pay for them, as far as we're more stuff in my room and my mom's room. Yeah, do you want to get receipts or invoices for them then, bud? And then we'll have a look at them. Well, I'm supposed to prove that. They're Christmas presents. They will be seized unless you can prove otherwise. Right, so that's my fucking property. I've paid for that. Right. I'm just going to go and check through my paper. Yeah, go and check through the paper. I knew I thought I brought it for Margaret's, but that's Curry's, that's the receipt, Curry's. Um, so that's for this laptop. Alright, happy with that one. Thank you. What's that for, mate? Have a look. The documents prove that the assets in the house do belong to Wayne. With nothing to take, Matt and Gary have no choice but to try and negotiate a payment plan Linda can afford and that the claimant might accept. Linda, how can we resolve this? How can we resolve this? Maybe we can't, to be honest. As Linda is on benefits, the agents need to see proof of her income so they can work out how much she can afford to pay. Have you got a letter for it? Have you got a letter? I think it's awesome. This might help. Oh, benefits, it's over with. 38 bands? Like, and I want benefits? There's no way. Help you out, so we need proof that you're getting it. But the situation is clearly taking its toll. Yeah. Yeah. Linda, calm, calm down. Calm down. He's just said, look, find the letters and he'll, he'll find out. I'm sure he'll. If you want to help you, find the letters, please. Right? There you go. That's what we need. The documents prove that Linda is on a low income. It's now up to Matt to figure out a realistic solution. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I've put forward, OK? £150 today. I can sort. probably get 150 quid together for you today. With £200 a month, not a week. She would have a month. I'm not saying they're going to come back and, and say yes to it. I don't know. Matt calls the office to see whether the claimant will accept a £200 a month payment plan. Hello? But as they've already rejected Linda's earlier offer of £800 a month, he's not hopeful. So, we're at the property at the minute. As far as his assets are concerned, the, the, you know, there isn't. So we're a bit, we're a bit big in the middle, um, but there is, there is an offer of an arrangement, £150 today, with um, £200 per month going forward. Oh, a $38,000 debt. Linda might go meet God before this is done. It's tough. I, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, but that, that's realistic. We are able to set arrangements. Um, if the claimant, uh, you know, is happy with that, they don't have any obligation to accept an arrangement. But sometimes, if there aren't any assets there, then that is the only way to move the case forward. Fifteen minutes later, like the office calls is. back. It's Hello. Speak to you shortly. Cheers. The claimant is prepared to accept a deal, but at a higher monthly rate. So the officer spoke to the client. So what they're saying is that they are willing to enter an agreement with you uh, under different terms. What they 
say they would they would like is five hundred pounds today. A month. No, today, today, with £300 a month going forward. I can have it by Friday, but not today. I've got £8 in there and he's got £150, that's all I've got. And you can get the rest to us on Friday? Yeah. Sorted, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. I've moved you got a five machine. Right. Yeah. Just so, yeah. With the help of her son, Linda has agreed to meet the claimant's request of a £500 down payment paid in two instalments. Take your card, buddy. Thank you very much. W son, man. I see a lot of sons that are dickheads that don't want to like assist. And yeah, I mean, he is pretty cool. You're welcome. Linda's mom. son also agrees to help her find the three hundred pound payment plan, but with thirty eight thousand to pay back, it'll be more than ten years until they're debt free. All right, Linda, you take care. All right, no worries. Right. You're also mind, ten years. Another ten years of interest also will be accumulated. Started, yeah, you understand everything. Yeah, <laughs> See you later. See you later. Mate. Ciao, ciao. We managed to get an arrangement in place in the end that the um, the, the, the claimant and the defendant are both happy with. You know, I think we've, I think we've got the best possible outcome um, for the client. Matt and Gary secured a result. Nearly 30,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales in the first quarter of 2017. The average amount owed now exceeds £2,700, a 36% increase from the previous year. The total value of county court judgments against businesses in England and Wales the first quarter of 2017 was 81 million pounds. High Court Enforcement Agent Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson are near Maidstone, Kent. They're hoping to collect a debt of £3,000 owed to a dissatisfied customer by car dealer Richard Adams, trading as Aspire Auto. Oh, here we are. There it is, Gary. Here we go. Ah, there's two entrances. There's more than 20 cars in this forecourt, mate. With plenty of potential assets on show, Gary and Connor could have all the leverage they need if Mr Adams can't or won't pay today. Now, all they have to do is find him. Let's have a look outside. Mm. You all right there? Can I speak to the company owner, please? Uh, he's not here at the moment, but I can, you can speak to me about that. OK. Um, we're here about a case where the uh, company's been taken to court. Um, we'll have to speak to him then, I Yeah, can you get him on the phone for me, please? The employee tries to call the debtor. But he's not picking up. I can't get in touch with him yet. You can't get in touch with him at all. Just, well, it's just going to ask, suppose. Can you keep trying? I know this isn't your debt or well, anything, but I'm, well, I'm going with it, so. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll try him as well. Please leave your message after the tone. Hello there. Um, my name is Gary Brown. I'm an enforcement agent, and I have a high court writ against Aspire Auto. If you could give me a call back, and we can get to get this resolved. Hopefully very quickly. Thank you. While Gary and Connor wait for Mr Adams to get in touch, they spot the dealer's stock list on the office computer. Uh, there it is. Bro finna come in highly irate. I already know it. This will be plus services and repairs and stuff, so, so purchase price is that. Because of removal and auction fees, Gary and Connor will have to remove several cars to cover the £3,000 debt. That Peugeot, it's, it's up for just under two grand, is what I'm thinking. So this is car number one, focuses the Range Rover. They identify four cars on the forecourt that would cover the debt and all the costs of removal. That's enough, you reckon, or...? Yeah. When we enforce against car dealers, you know that there's always assets and you know in the back of your mind it's just a bit of a waiting game and if you back off a bit, you're eventually going to get the debt paid. But they definitely got $3,000 now, come on. 
there's still no sign of the debtor. Well, what we're going to do is, as we can't get hold of him, we're going to do a controlled goods agreement. He needs to contact us when he gets in or when you can get in contact with him to make a payment on this. Otherwise, we're going to have to come back and remove goods if there's not a payment made. I'll give him 48 hours. 48 hours. Gary and Connor list the cars they've identified to seize on a controlled goods agreement and leave the paperwork in the office. Mm, you're going to come back, them cars going to be gone, buddy. The control goods agreement means the cars cannot legally be moved or sold. And they do not care. And if Mr. Adams doesn't pay in 48 hours, they have the right to return to seize them. All right. Thanks, mate. Take care. It's quite frustrating to get to an address and you've got all this leverage in front of you and there's nobody there to speak to. But all you can do is take, anyway. take control of the assets that are there and leave the paperwork and give them a chance to get in touch. Two days later, Mr. Adams has still not been in touch. And so Gary and Connor are paying another visit to Aspire Auto. But this time, they're in for a surprise. As you go, it's a lot. For God's sake. And our Peugeot is not in the showroom anymore. Is it not? No. He's got one of them heavy duty padlocks on this one. Makes life a bit awkward, doesn't it? Yeah. The other three cars Gary and Connor listed on the controlled goods agreement have also disappeared. And the place appears to be empty. So if he has removed the cars, then he is breaking the law. And the police will then become involved and the cars will be reported as stolen. But there's someone here. Yeah, he got a lock lock on that one. But then Gary spots someone leaving the showroom. Excuse me! If you don't open the gates, mate, we'll force entry. Yeah, the, the they got a nice lock on there, but that chain can still be cut. The lock might not be able to be cut, but that chain is getting cut. The guys in there have obviously been briefed not to speak to us. Let me go and speak to this fellow. There is someone over there. Fellas, I'm about to cut the gate open, okay? So you either want to open it or get this bloke on the phone. Gary sees the man going into another building at the back of the car showroom. Has he locked that gate as well? Get the big yellow scissors out. The writ empowers them to force entry if necessary. Yeah. That's a nice lock, but that gate, that, that chain's still cheap, buddy. Can to get the owner on the phone for me, please? I've got the police on the phone. At the back of the dealership, Gary's in for a surprise. He finds a large working garage. If this is part of Mr. Adams' business, the expensive equipment inside would be much more cost-effective to remove than the vehicles left on the forecourt. True. True. Yeah, you've got a got a high court writ. I need proof of ownership for all the diagnostic equipment in there, the tyre machines, everything. This, this is actually a separate business compared with the front. Are you open for business? I am. Why isn't the gate open? Because the cousin's ringers. Sorry? Because the cousin's ringers. What, do you mean when I came to the gate and you walked away from me? Despite the man's claims that this is a separate business to Aspire Ooh. Auto, Gary is suspicious. Has he got a number for Richard Adams? Okay. I think you're being a bit more evasive than what? I was just told to keep the door, doors locked and keep myself to myself. And that's what I'm doing. I don't think you're being completely honest with me. What's your name, fella? Nothing to do with me. No, but I've got nothing to do with any of I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe that between everyone that's here now, you haven't got you haven't got um, any contact details, or you're not able to contact Richard Adams. I've got nothing for him. Mm. It just doesn't ring true to me. I'm afraid. Gary still hasn't seen proof that the garage is not part of Aspire Auto. Then he spots some paperwork. Right, yeah, this is, this is kind of what I need to... Is 
So I've found some receipts here, which they've all got a Spire Auto on. Nailing the coffin. So. The receipts show that garage repairs and services are being invoiced under the name Aspire Auto. Gary now has the evidence to show that the garage is connected with the debtor company. This guy's locking up the... But then the mechanic takes action of his own. If you lock that, I'll be breaking it open. If you lock that, I'll be breaking it open. You're not doing yourself any favours by doing this. The goods in there, I believe, belong to Aspire Auto. If you don't open these, then I'll call the police because you deliberately just lock these doors. Kent police, please. I need police assistance, please, because I've got people. This is long. Oh, they got. Oh, now, they, now, see, now, now this lock might come into play because it's not on a chain; it's directly. But you can still pry this off that wood, though. People here obstructing me. The police are on their way, but then. Connor spots something in an unlocked car. Gary, mate. Yeah. Oh, hello. Or spotted. The diagnostic unit, with its expensive software, could be worth almost £4,000. So this is quite a good piece of leverage you've got. It's probably worth more than any of the cars on the forecourt. But this will fit in the glove box, whereas a car is... A logistically a lot more difficult to remove. We've got a result. The machine is all the agents need to offset the debt. This is the connector, all the connectors and stuff. All around there. This is it, mate. The whole machine with all the connectors, the case, everything was right there in the car, huh? This is it cleared. With no need to get into the garage, Gary calls off the police. Can I cancel police assistance, please? It's quite normal for debtors to be evasive, but when they're going to the lengths that they're refusing access and removing goods that we've already taken control of, then it oversteps a boundary, and they're actually committing an offence then. It never ceases to amaze me the lengths people will go to to, to be evasive. All right, mate. All right. See you later, mate. Still shook their hand, though. Well, we got all we came for. That's the main thing. Research has revealed that having children increases the probability of getting into debt by more than 50%. 100%. That's, what, that stat is 100% true. More than a third of UK families with children report that they would have to borrow money to pay for essentials should the cost of living increase. Couples with children who contacted a leading debt charity in 2016 owed an average of £17,478. High Court Enforcement Agents Matt Highway and Gary Ball are in Birmingham to collect a debt of over £6,500 owed by Nada Joma and Tony Santos for unpaid nursery fees. He's a bit of a danger to himself, isn't he? No. The nursery escalated the case to the High Court. Unpaid nursery fees. Over the drive, mate. And now Matt and Gary must collect payments. As much as you think them nurseries, especially them private ones, that are LLCs or whatever y'all would call it there, they need their money just as bad. In full today. Hello, morning. Can I speak to Nada Jamal or Tony Santos, please? Yeah, I don't know. Who's here? My name's Mr. Highway, my High Court Enforcement Agent. Mm -hmm. Is that yourself or is it somebody here? They moved from here. They moved from here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Have you got some identification for yourself? Yeah. You have? Smash him. Thank you. Thank you. The woman shows the agents a passport in the name of Hayam Kadimi. But as this is the address on the writ, the agents have the right to stay and investigate further. 
And when did you move in? Uh, about six months ago. Six months ago. Yeah. Uh, you live on your own here? Yeah. I smell a whole lot of cap. And is it property rented? Yeah. You got a tenancy agreement? If you come back to me after I drop the case, I'll be Yeah, you're going to need to find it now, sweet, I'm afraid. We need to see it now. Okay, give me two minutes to check. Okay? Yeah, thank you. But Matt is suspicious. You just um, play with FM and I'll see if there's any yeah. system. Yeah. Matt turns detective. He checks all the information he's been given about the debtor on his phone. Thank you. Can I have my passport back up again, Matt? Excuse me, why are you checking? Like Matt checks the woman's ID with the details on his phone. What's your date of birth, madam? 14 January, 84. Got the right person, then, madam, it's you, isn't it? Well, unless you've got exactly the same date of birth as the person that's just moved out, which is pretty unlikely, isn't it, really? Matt and Gary now suspect that she might be using two names. Oh. Are you Nada Jamal? Yeah. With the woman still denying that she's the debtor, Matt and Gary now need to use all their skill to work out if she's telling the truth and get the six and a half thousand pounds they came for. She's lying, but you know. Anyway, here. Now the agent suspects she is using two names. Well, unless you've got exactly the same date of birth as the person that's just moved out, which is pretty unlikely, isn't it, really? Matt hopes his persistence will pay off. No. I will tell you, Tony Santos, that Santos is my ex-partner. He's your ex-partner. Yeah. Right, smash, and now we're getting he's somewhere now, aren't he's we? He's not here. He's not here? He left the country. Right, OK. And you're not Nada Jamal? No. You're not? But Matt... Lying. When people blink for too long, they lie. She said... She said liar. ...is not giving up. The agents look inside the property. They want to find evidence to confirm their suspicions that the woman is using two names and that she is the debtor that they're looking for. Is this my paper? Sorry? Is this my paper? It's one of your letters, yeah. Why are you checking my letters? I can check anything that's in the property. Gary then makes an important discovery. So her name on the Jama. Her residence permit. permit. Nada Abdul Hamid Jama. Named one name on a court writ, one name on a, on a passport, same lady. Yeah, well, that's the game, isn't it? That's yeah. how the game's played. The document proves that the woman is the debtor, Nada Jomar, after all. So, do you want to talk some sense now? Your name's Nada Jomar. Tony's your ex-partner, yes? Yeah. Correct. Smash in. When, when you find that bit of evidence, um, and, lie, you know, so it, you it, is, it is checkmate, oh, uh, you know, there's no way for the defendant to go. Um, oh, they've got to either deal with it or lose something and all that's left to do is take the money. With her deceit uncovered, the agents can now continue to enforce the writ. So we're here with a High Court writ this morning on behalf of probably a day nursery that your children went to other thoughts. It's now been escalated to the High Court for enforcement purposes. So we're here today to remove £6,568.32 worth of goods. The only way to stop that from happening is to pay in full. Yes, six thousand five hundred and sixty-eight pounds thirty-two. So if you'd like, damn, she ain't never paid the daycare. Like to make some phone never? calls yeah, if you need to, or if you need to contact Tony. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, smash it. Uh, man, this is a nice house, though, Loki. Nada tries to get her ex-partner Tony on the phone, but he's not picking up. You need to speak to him, because unless we get payment, then we're removing goods. So if you want to avoid that, then you need to speak to him. He's not answering. No. Can you pay this amount, madam? No. 6,568.32. I've You want to come back for me after? No, thank you. Wait, I don't think you understand. We're here to either remove goods to this amount. The only way to stop that is to pay. With no offer of payment, and Nada unable to reach her... Nice little trip, mill right there. Former partner, the agents have no choice but to seize assets. Matt turns his attention to the car parked outside. Ah, Just um, stick a clamp on that. Chevrolet, mate. But the value of the car would only cover part of the debt. So the agents need to start an inventory of goods inside the house for other assets they could seize.
That plus the uh, treadmill should... I'll just start taking pictures of the, the items. Right? Yeah, I got the TV, mate. Start with the top there. And a PS4 as well. PS4? I'm telling you, take whatever you want to take. No, it's fine. But as the agents continue their infantry, they make a surprising discovery. Oh, this is an interesting one, Mr. Ball. What's that? Gary. Yeah. Where are you? What's that? She's also a special constable for Northamptonshire Police. Mm. You're joking. <laughs> it absolutely yeah, beggars she's belief. She's learning. She's learning to be a special constable. Yeah, so you're are you a special constable then? Yeah, just four weeks left. Can I give you a little piece of advice? If you're going to be a police officer, the next time someone comes and asks you a question, you need to answer it truthfully. I know. And I told you to take everything. I'll give you my car. I said, take my car even. Because I know you are, you're doing your job. And I can't take all this hassle. It's too much for me. Sometimes if the, uh, you know... She do seem rather peaceful. Rather peaceful, calm demeanor type energy. If the debt's a considerable amount of money, um, the, the defendant will actually rather that you take something. Uh, because you know they know the value of it, they they know what it what it is to them. They bought it originally, um, so if they paid fifteen hundred pounds to two thousand pounds for it, they know that's that's what it's worth to them. Um, so if if you're there looking for four or five thousand pounds, then sometimes that's the best outlet for the defendant to say, well, okay, just take the car. The agents have now been in the house for an hour and a half. It's nearly nine a.m. And Nada needs to take her children to school. This is the house key. This one is, yeah. Yeah, and this is the car key. Yeah. With her car seized, the family go off in a taxi, leaving the agents to continue the enforcement alone. She's left the property now. So she's... Uh, yeah, she's really over it. She's gone and said, crack on, do what you like and see you later. Um, so we, well, we've got very little choice now but to remove, remove goods. The assets in the house aren't enough to cover the £6,500 debt. So Matt decides to take the car. Hello. How are you, Hi, mate. Where's the car got to go to? Because I'll probably just drive it there, save waiting for recovery. OK. The agents lock up and leave the property. Nada will have 14 days to pay the debt, or the car will be sold at auction. We've got a full tank of fuel, we're good to go. Car's gonna get sold at auction. It's gonna go towards the debt, but the debt, the debt is still on rise. If selling the car doesn't cover the debt, the agents will be back. I think on an enforcement on visit, when you know when something's being hidden and it becomes apparent that someone's hiding something, um, it, it spurs us on. It, it gives us the drive to to, to look even deeper um, and to you know turn the rocks over that hadn't been turned over previously. Um, you know, there's something to hide there. What is it? Why are they hiding it? Is it going to be of use to us? Is it an asset that's been uh, hidden away from us? Um, you know, is it going to... I ain't see my boys today, man. The original two. Essentially allow us to, uh, to enforce the writ today. Or at least one of the original two. First charge ever. Miss Bird made the down payment as promised and has kept up with the down payment. Cover? We'll never know.